welcome back to the channel. My name is Hayden and it is now after Christmas. I hope everybody had a great Merry Christmas last week. There was no new video last week because of Christmas, but now I am back and I want to talk to you guys about something that I didn't expect to do. I was planning to get the new iPhone 12 in January. Now I didn't think any Verizon store would have the new iPhone 12 because of the holidays. People want to go and get new phones, they don't want to give them as gifts, they want to give them as gifts for themselves and so on. What I did was I went to the Verizon in New Hampshire that I preferably like and I asked if they have any iPhone 12s. They had every color in every storage device and this was two days after Christmas which was absolutely crazy to me. So I want to talk to you guys about my new iPhone 12 and what I like about it so far. First of all I'm coming from a product red iPhone 10R, 256 gigabytes which I then gave to my father because he is not a high tech person and he does not need the newest technology out there. So it's a gain for me and a gain for him. He gets a new phone, I get a new phone. Now, first of all, 256 gigabytes was the storage on my iPhone XR. I dropped down to 128 gigabytes, but still going red with my iPhone 12. Why did I do this? Because I did not feel that I was using all of the space and why pay for the extra $5 that it costs per month to pay for storage that I don't need. I thought about this and I dropped down to 128 gigabytes because I'm literally using under 100, gig 100 gigabytes on my phone and I'm not using all the apps I have on my phone. So why not pay for just right in the middle storage amount that I need and it's perfect for me. Under 128 gigabytes is 64 gigabytes. That is just not enough for me. In my opinion, I think they should just drop that and have 128 gigabytes as the baseline storage amount for your phone because that's just the amount, right, bound, right amount that I think anybody needs. Now, first of all, the biggest difference in iPhone 12 from the 10R was the 10R had more of a curved design. Apple went to the blockier design. We first found about this blockier design when they had the iPhone 4. iPhone 4 was more of a block design. iPhone 5 was a block design. Then introduced Apple, Apple introduced the iPhone 6, which they then went to the curved side of the phone. It was more like a curved design instead of like a block design, if that really makes any sense. After that, from all the way up until the 6, all the way up until the 12, they had that curved design. I knew Apple would go back to this blocky design because this is one of the designs they originally had coming from when the iPhone 4 was announced. And to be honest, I love it. At first, I thought Apple was making the wrong decision going back to the blocky design because I wasn't a fan of it. I'm very, very happy with it. And it feels like my iPhone is more thinner to hold instead of making it longer to hold because that's how the iPhone XR was. And the case also made it so that it was more of a wider phone to hold. But the iPhone 12, I got the same case, my Rhino Shield with a red rim and red buttons on the side. And it makes it seem like it is a lot skinnier to hold, which I enjoy very much. Which brings me to the color. Now, Apple has this in the new Pacific Blue color, red, white, black, green, and blue. Now, I was thinking about the Pacific Blue color. I like blue, but the blue that I really prefer was on the iPhone XR, a lighter blue and not so much a darker blue. So that's why I decided to go back to red. But this year, Apple made it look like the product red that they've always had made it look like more of an orange color. But when I look at it in person now, it does not look like it's orange at all. It, look like, it looks like it's just a lighter red than what they had on the iPhone XR. And that is the reason why I went with red again because I'm not a big fan of black, white, green, or blue. I've always had black in the past on my iPods when I was younger, so it's obviously time to go to different colors such as red. And not a different color like blue, especially when it's not the blue that I like. So red was definitely the color for me. And product red, I believe when you buy an iPhone that is red, Apple donates some money to the, I believe the AIDS Foundation on behalf of you getting a red iPhone 12, which I always like to support. Now, my old 10R had one camera. That's the first off thing anybody will notice when they get a new phone. All the new phones nowadays are coming with more cameras. And my iPhone XR just had a standard wide, standard camera. I loved it. But the iPhone 12 came with a bonus. I don't take a ton of pictures. I enjoy taking pictures, but I'm not a very photographic person. 
So I went with the 12 because it actually has an ultra wide camera. If I were to vlog, which I hope to do in the future, ultra wide would be great because the standard camera looks like it zooms in too much. So I have the standard camera and the ultra wide angle camera, which I can just switch between, switch between very easily. And for that, I love. I'm not a big fan of the Pro where they have three cameras. I think three or over is kind of much and it would be too much for me. Which is a reason I didn't go with the Pro, which we will talk about later. Now this is the same size as my iPhone XR 6.1 inch display, diagonally measured. I love this and I feel that it is the perfect phone size. Anything bigger than this, too big. Anything smaller than this, iPhone 12 mini, I've not used, but I would like to use. That would probably also be the same, the right size iPhone for a person like me. Now, coming out of the box, Apple changed the design of the boxes this year, which I love. We are used to a thick iPhone box, and I mean thick. Apple shortened the height of the boxes this year, and they are much thinner because we do not include a charging brick. In the past, Apple has had bigger boxes because they included the charging brick. This year, Apple is switching from USB-A charging brick to USB-C. But this is what happens. But the biggest change is Apple does not include a USB-C brick in the box. They did this because they feel it is better for the environment, which I can very much agree with. On my old iPhone tower, when I first got it, I have had a ton of bricks and I do not need another one. So what happened with it? I put it right back in the box because I didn't need it. So that's, I can thoroughly agree with Apple saving the environment on that. We always wanna do what's best for the environment and I agree with that. There's not much more to say, but the iPhone 12 brick is only USB-C and it charges your new phone faster. USB-C is quite literally the future. It charges your phone much faster than USB-A would. Now the USB-C brick Apple sells separately for $19. I don't think this is a very bad price point considering if you want to use your old brick, which is still fine, as long as you are fine with it taking a lot longer for it to charge. The average rate is four hours on the old brick and probably about under an hour on the new brick. So you can probably find a USB-C brick that is from Anchor or a third party company for a lower price than what Apple has. But if you're fine with paying with Apple's $19 price point, be my guest and go ahead. Now I got that for Christmas. It is on my desk over there on my main gaming PC desk. And I enjoy it and I love it. But Apple also came out with a new charging device which we will talk about here in a second. Now if you are familiar with Apple's ecosystem and have been a long time fan like myself, back in 2008 Apple came out with the MacBook Air, a very thin MacBook that comes in two sizes and it is for the average user. Now the charger on that was called MagSafe. I love this charger, I love this idea, but I never unfortunately got to experience it as much as I'd like to. They had a charger that literally magnetizes to the port of your MacBook and you know it's charging when the light comes on and you hear the sound. I love that design and I was never able to experience it, but Apple came up with MagSafe for iPhone. It took them many years to do this, but it looks incredible. It's literally just a circular magnet with a rubber feel on it, and it is USB-C on the other end, so it charges your phone much, much faster. Apple has a built-in ring inside of their phone so you can wirelessly charge this. And I used magnet paper, which I was able to see the magnets inside the iPhone so I could see where the ring was. And there's only one ring on the iPhone and the magnet magnetizes to that ring. And I found when I was using my phone that it does not fall off. The magnets are very strong. Even if I were to shake my phone, they would not come off. I love the design of this. I love this idea. And I knew they would always come out with this, but I never knew when. And I didn't think it would take them 12 years to do that. But to me, this is awesome. Apple sells this for, I believe, also an additional $20. It might be $40, I believe $40. To me, it is worth it, but if you are just a person that wants to use a normal wireless charging pad or a cable, go ahead and do that. But iPhone 12, I got this on Sunday. It is now Wednesday, December 30th, and I love it. I 
would not go back to a 10R or even downgrade, but we all know there is a future of phones and we are beginning to get more phones with better features. Now, speaking of the iPhone 12, Apple came out with the iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Different models that you can choose from. Now, when I saw this, I knew I wanted to get an iPhone 12, but which one was the main issue? I wanted originally to go iPhone 12 Pro, but what I didn't like about it was it was a little bigger. No, actually, correction. It was the same size, but it literally was a fingerprint magnet. As soon as you pick it up, your fingerprints were on the side of the phone. I did not like that. Also, it comes with a third camera. I'm not a huge photographic person, as I said before, but I still don't need three cameras. So the iPhone 12 was also $100 more, but I still didn't see myself needing to get that, especially when it only comes in black, silver, gold, and their new Pacific blue color. I'm a person that wants to have, I'm a picky person to have the color that I want. I'm not gonna go with a color that I'm not a huge fan of, especially using for my phone which is our daily driver that we use all the time. Nonetheless, I went with my iPhone 12. I am very happy with it, and I am very proud to be using this. So those are my thoughts on the iPhone 12. If you have any additional thoughts or anything you'd like to add, please add them in the, in the comment section below. Make sure to like this video. Of course, subscribe if you like to see my content and would like to further see my future content. And I will see you guys in the next video.